Well, hello, boys and girls, and welcome to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and this is the review of the brand new gothic superhero film directed by Rupert Sanders, starring Bill Skarsgård, The Crow. Yes, the reboot of the beloved 1994 film that starred the great Brandon Lee, a film series that has multiple sequels that nobody talks about because they were all trash. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but this has been a film that has been stuck in development hell for so long. They have tried to get this film off the ground pretty much since the 1994 film, you know, excluding the sequels. Uh, but they've been trying to reboot this franchise for Ah, oh my God, I, I think I first heard of a reboot like early 2000s, like 2005, five, six, somewhere up in that area. They were talking about rebooting this property, which is a hot property. This is a very interesting character. Uh, I love The Crow, you know, the 1994 film. I absolutely adored it. it it's, it's one of those films that this was around the time when uh, you know, I was a teenager just coming in in my own, uh, getting back into comic books around that time and uh, 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 enjoying what I was getting from multiple medias from comic book properties. And, you know, when you look back on certain films in that era, they don't age well. They're very dated. You know, they, you you celebrated it back then because that's all you had. Uh, but there are a few gems that stick out that still hold up to this day and the crow from 1994 is one of those films absolutely love that film and so when they finally got this film off the ground and they actually released a trailer for it a few months ago i was super excited because you know we're 30 years removed you know uh technology has took a big step forward as far as special effects and whatnot um filmmakers uh have been they haven't been tied down by studios you know you can't really go into the uh, you know i'm talking back then you really can't go in depth in the super uh superhero comic book lore as far as the subject matter is concerned you're not going to get that, you know, back then. But now you can really dive in. It's not pigeonholed to a certain uh, demographic, I guess you could say. Even though the first uh, or the original Crow wasn't either. It it, it didn't hold anything back. That was a very R-rated, uh, gory at times film. And so I guess that's not fair to compare it. But now... With so much love and care taken to comic book films as of late for the past 20 years, I would say, it's, it's, it's a breath of fresh air. And we get to see this particular character really shine. At least so you thought. Uh, the Crow from 2024, it follows Eric Draven, uh, a man who is resurrected to avenge the deaths of himself and his girlfriend. Uh, starring alongside Bill Skarsgård is FKA Twigs. Yes, that's her stage name. And <laughs> and Danny uh, Houston. This film, where do I begin? Um, <laughs> to say that we waited so long, or me in particular, waited so long for uh, uh, another Crow adaptation. I mean, think about it. I think the Crow has had what about five sequels and including a television show there was an actual crow television show i think it was called stairway to heaven if i'm not mistaken could be wrong it didn't matter i didn't i watched like two or three episodes and i was done um <laughs> but it, they've been trying to capture the magic of that first film for years you know for 30 years and they just can't do it and i'm here to tell you that this adaptation of the crow definitely didn't do it this was one of the worst films of the year for me and definitely one of the worst comic book adaptations i've ever seen 
this was so bad. I, I don't know how this film got greenlit. I'm trying. <laughs> it took me a day to record this review after watching this movie because I was trying to wrap in my head how this film got greenlit because this film went through so many changes. So many people were involved at, with the uh, development of this film at some point or another. I think this film has had more A-list actors attached to the role of Eric Draven throughout the last, I'll go back as far as 20 years maybe, and it just fell through. And I'm talking, these aren't slubs. And nobody, and that's not a knock on Bill Skarsgård or nothing like that, because I love Bill Skarsgård. Uh, but I don't know what happened with all these other, let's run through the list. These are just the names that I know. At one point, Mark Wahlberg was offered the role. Uh, uh, Bradley Cooper was in talks at one point to be the crow. Um, Ryan Gosling at one point was in talks. Uh, Channing Tatum, James McAvoy, uh, Tom Hiddleston. Yes, Loki. He was uh, in talks to play the crow at one point. Alexander Skarsgård the older brother of Bill Skarsgård was <laughs> attached to the role at one point. Luke Evans was attached. Norman Reedus was attached. Nicholas Hope, Jack O'Connor, Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa went as far as to post a picture of himself with the crow makeup on in on his uh, Instagram. <laughs> it, it, it was crazy how many people we're looking to uh, portray this character because this is a very rich character to play and all of it fell through and we finally got Bill Skarsgård who we all know as Pennywise the clown from the it films uh, to portray the role and I was excited for that I was super excited for that because Bill Skarsgård I've been looking or waiting for uh, the right role for that he can shine in, that we can celebrate, like, okay, this is him. Because in It, it was more about the kids than it was about Pennywise, even though Pennywise was the villain, was the focal point of those movies. And he did an excellent job in those films as Pennywise the Clown. And so I figured, okay, he's going to dress as a different kind of clown this go around <laughs> and play the crow. <sighs> Poor Bill Skarsgård. That's pretty much all I can say. This movie um, had no substance at all. This movie, it's nothing about this movie that would attract you to it. Nothing. And Rupert Sanders, who is an interesting director. I'm not going to say he's an, uh, an all-star, super excellent director, but he's a very visionary uh, director, a very uh, unique director. He directed Snow White and the Huntsman, which isn't a great film, but it's very, it's beautifully shot. It was a beautiful film. That's not to be argued. He also directed the live action version of the uh, MAGA uh, uh, Ghost in the Shell, which once again, wasn't the greatest of films, but I can argue that it was a really good movie just didn't live up to the mag or the uh, anime version of that but it was beautifully shot beautifully done and so him taking on this property when he was announced i was like okay okay that's a, that's a good choice you know nah it, it wasn't it wasn't i don't know what happened i don't know if the studio got involved i don't know if they cut it um to, <laughs> for reasons i don't i don't know what happened here but this movie was a complete dumpster fire. I'm telling you, it's, it's right now as it stands at the end of August, it's the worst movie of the year. To me, it, it is truly disappointing to the highest level of disappointment you can get. And I had zero expectations. Even though I was excited for this, I'm a fan of this property. The marketing told me, don't get excited. The Lionsgate told me don't get excited for this film because they did not market this movie. 
at all. It, it was like you sparingly saw uh, a, a trailer or a commercial for The Crow that it was coming out. I actually forgot it was coming out. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't it was on the top 10 list for me this weekend. It was so much other stuff to uh, watch this weekend. And it just so happened, I, I think I glanced at something and it, maybe one commercial or something popped up on TV and they're like, now playing, now playing? It, it just blew my mind. Uh, but no, this this movie is, oh my God. It, it, it's one of these movies that I think would have served better for all involved if it would have went straight to digital, if it would have went straight to a streaming service or something to that effect. Uh, let me let me explain why. Let's get into the review. The, the, let's start with the cast here. Bill Skarsgård, I think, did the best he can with what he was given. He, he's actually watchable in this movie. He does a real good job. I enjoyed him in this film. Um, The only shining light of this movie is Bill Skarsgård because he really went out there. He did a, a really good job with his character. You felt his character. You felt the pain of this character. The problem is the chemistry between him and uh, FKA Twigs was not there for me. I just didn't feel this deep love between these two that's supposed to be driving the plot of this movie is the love between these two. That's what's keeping him alive. That's what's, that's what ultimately resurrected him. And... I'm like, that's what re resurrected him. I love a pair of shoes about as much as I love <laughs> that, I, that I saw with the love between these two here. Now, it, it wasn't like bad chemistry, like those two didn't get along or they just didn't fit. It, it was a nice fit. But as far as displaying the love that these two have for one another, it wasn't there. And I, I blame the direction there and maybe the screenplay as well that it really wasn't flushed out their love, you know, their love story, their, their bond between one another. I, I just didn't feel it. I, I couldn't get it through the screen. And so that's where the movie fails because this is what the movie is based on. You know, that this deep love, this sacrifice that he's willing to go through ultimately at the end, uh, no spoilers, of course, but I'm like, for what? Why? <laughs> you know, is is I can understand you have a love for, her, but this felt more of a deep affatuation than it is a a deep love and a goppy love, a a love that you would take a bullet for. I I, I just didn't see that. Uh, unfortunately, the villain in this film, played by Danny Houston, um. I can't even put my finger on it. I, I, I can't even describe what that character is or what the purpose of that character is or what that character was all about. Um, it is like he was just there to say you have a villain. And then the quote unquote climactic conclusion to this film between the crow and the villain was so anticlimactic. It was unbelievable. I mean, I've had arguments with my children that had more drama than the than what took place between our hero in this film and our main villain in this film. Unbelievably disappointing. Now, going back to FKA uh FKA Twigs, I liked her in this movie as well. I think she really tried her best here. I haven't seen her in much of anything. I think I've seen her in one other movie, uh, but this was my first time really focusing on her uh, acting and she did a good job once again with what she was given, but it wasn't really enough. You know, I, it wasn't enough to carry this movie or me to believe her character or feel her character or even feel sympathy for what happened to her character in this film, you know, or cheer her for her cat it, it, it just she was just there you know <laughs> she was just there to play this part and that was that you know but it wasn't her fault it, it was more of the direction and the writing um she suffered for it everybody suffered for it 
to put it plainly. Uh, the film itself, the, the film itself is called The Crow. We don't get The Crow until about an hour and 10 minutes into this film, or maybe an hour. <laughs> you know, it, it, the, the real story for what you go to see this film for doesn't kick off until an hour into this movie. The first hour is all set up to nothing, to a wet fart. <laughs> it was like, my God, oh, when are we going to get to the point of this movie? This movie took so long on trying to set up what happens at the end, and it just didn't match. And for a film that had no real connection, no real uh, uh, chemistry between our two lead characters, that, that was the whole purpose of that first hour. Oh, maybe the first 45 minutes. I may be embellishing. It felt like two hours to be honest with you but that first uh act and a half of this film that was the time to build this relationship between these two and it didn't it failed it you after all that time it was so messy the it, everything was just messy uh once again the direction <laughs> it was poorly directed and the movie fell apart at that point i didn't care when he finally became the crow, I didn't care. I, I just did not care. I, I I was not invested in his character. I was not invested in uh, uh, Twig's character. I wasn't invested in the villain. The villain was just there. It was no motivation for the villain to do what he did. They gave him this quote unquote motivation for, you know, the reason why he did what he did Oh, in this case, but it was so stupid. <laughs> it was the dumbest thing I was I'm like really this is the reason why he's doing what he's doing it made no sense this was so poorly executed now uh, there were some things I did like believe it or not there were some things that I did like in this film I I liked one scene when they had uh, when the crow became the crow when he went full crow and just was taking fools out with a sword in, in that scene. That scene was brutal. They didn't cheapen the brutality in that scene. It was gory. It was brutal. And it was, it was full on R rated uh, close to NC 17 to be honest. <laughs> it was brutal, but that was just that one scene. And that was that. Oh, man, it was so disappointing. Now, if we would have got that throughout the film, I would have been happy. And that that doesn't, <laughs> and I'm not trying to make it out to be like I'm I'm some type of sick freak. Like, I just want to see blood and go guts poured out over the, <laughs> the course of this film. But, if, I mean, this is the type of film that it is, you know? You set it up to be, and you only get one scene like that. Not even the, not even the climax not even the climax had all that, but it was that one scene that was enjoy enjoyable. As I mentioned, Bill Skarsgård as the crow, I liked him. I did. I liked him. Uh, that was about it. That was the only two factors that I liked about this movie. <laughs> Everything else was complete trash. And it you can't help but look back to 30 years ago, a film that's 30 years old with less special effects with less of a budget, with less of everything, did it better. I would rather watch that film 50 times in a row. And I, I would probably do it because it's an excellent movie. Before I would ever watch this movie again, I have no desire to watch The Crow again. And I'm talking about The Crow from 2024. The Crow mm, 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 gets a letter grade of an F. Yeah, this this was <laughs> this was this was not good at all, man. This this was so disappointing. And like I said, it, what makes it even worse of a disappointment is the fact that I had no expectation because I had a feeling it was going to be bad, but I didn't know it was going to be this bad. My goodness, man! I would love to know what did you think of the crow? Do you think I'm tripping? 
And it's like, oh, man, it's better than the original. I would love to hear that argument. <laughs> Please, I would love to hear that. But if you feel the way I feel, I would love to hear your reasons as well. Email the show, kbradiopodcast at gmail.com. You can also search for this show on all social media platforms. Just search for the KB Radio Network. Also, subscribe to the KB Radio Network channel on YouTube and like this video if you don't mind. Don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. Everybody, thank you for joining me for this review of the year's worst movie so far, The Crow. Oh, man. I mean, after all these, it's, it's like, my God, all these years. All these years, y'all couldn't get a good script together? Y'all couldn't get a good game plan together for this movie? I bet, no wonder all those actors walked away from this movie. <laughs> it makes sense. If this is the movie that they were presented with, oh, no, I'll walk away, too. I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Uh, man, the crow. My goodness. I want you all to know that I love you. Continue to love everyone, and until we speak again, you all be blessed.